The Alabama Farmers Federation and the Alabama Farmers Cooperative proudly present Simply Southern with your hosts, Jim Allen and Mary Johns. Hello and welcome to Simply Southern. I'm Jim Allen. And I'm Mary Johns. Coming up on today's show, we'll meet members of a volunteer organization who are making a big difference for some horses in the Montgomery area. He would have been dead had Monica not gotten him, and he's one of the best trail horses you could ever want to ride. Mild wet weather made 2017 a challenge for farmers across Alabama. Along the Gulf Coast, you can add the effects of hurricanes to conditions that are causing problems for pecan growers. We've had a little over 100 inches of rain this summer. Sidney Phelps of Bonnie Plants has some tips for keeping your garden properly watered, even during the typically dry summer months. But up first today, the monastic life brings to mind thoughts of prayer, solitude, Gregorian chant, and homemade bread. We'll meet the Coleman County monks behind St. Bernard Abbey's Monk Spread. What sustains us? Food, family, faith. Alabama farmers live those things every day. They conserve our resources, clothe our families, and fill our tables. They cultivate jobs for our communities and values for our future. Farmers grow it all right here in Alabama. There's no such thing as downtime when you own a farm. This is your land. You tend it and try to get the most from it, no matter the weather or time of day. It's been that way for generations. And for generations, your local quality co-op store has been there for you. With a full range of agriculture supplies and services, from feed to fertilizer, seed to grain storage, and the right hardware for any application, you'll always find what you need. Plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. Back around 530 AD, the man who became St. Benedict founded a monastery. In its 1500 years of history, the Benedictine order has been credited with preserving ancient literature, advancing agriculture technology, honing the craft of brewing beer, and baking up superior wheat-laden treats. In Alabama, you can find the monks of St. Bernard's Abbey carrying on the Benedictine baking tradition in Coleman. The monks at St. Bernard Abbey follow the simple motto of the Benedictine order, ora et labora, pray and work. And for the Abbey's head baker, that work includes mixing, shaping, and baking nearly 100 loaves of monk's bread every day. Our morning prayers, uh, we get up at six o'clock and do those prayers in the morning. And then after that, the bakers go directly to the bakery and start the mixing process of the ingredients. And uh, that process, mixing, molding, cutting, and then baking, all takes all morning. Brother Pacomius, a native of Cuba, is currently the head baker. But Brother Benedict, who grew up in Opelika, lends a hand whenever there are lots of orders to fulfill. Commonly people, when they think of a monk, they think of uh, a guy who's totally secluded um, and, and wrapped in prayer and contemplation all day. But we do other things too. And one of the main things that we do is we instruct young people. And in order to be able to do that, the monastery has to be supported. So the different crafts and artisanship of the monastery, including monks' bread, go to support that. The Abbey's school currently has about 200 students, including international students. And with a bakery so close, they and the brothers get to enjoy their fair share of monks' bread. You have to be careful how much you eat because it puts on the pounds. Uh, and it happens to make wonderful French toast, uh, wonderful regular toast in general, um, and just people love it, and the monks love it too. And these monks are high tech. Along with posting updates on the community's Facebook and Twitter pages, they also sell their monks bread online. Or you can purchase bread the old school way, in person at the Abbey gift shop. You know, people want something that monks make, I don't know why, but but I guess it, they may think it's going to bring them closer to God. Uh, if you want monk's bread and you call the monastery, you're not likely to get an answer. But if you come to the gift shop, Brother Christopher will get it for you one way or the other. 
The monks offer two kinds of bread, a traditional cinnamon raisin recipe and a newly developed Italian herb recipe. The cinnamon raisin bread's for breakfast and the Italian dinner bread's for dinner or lunch. You know, you're not gonna put jelly necessarily on an Italian dinner bread, but it always is good with spaghetti. The Abbey Gift Shop offers a lot more than just monk's bread, from tasty products produced by other religious communities to books, movies, gifts, and admission to the Abbey's biggest attraction, the Ave Maria Grotto. Located on four acres, the grotto includes representations of famous religious buildings and shrines of the world. Brother Joseph, who was a monk here, was responsible for creating the miniatures. Um, there's over a hundred of them, and he did that from 34 to 58 out here. So whether you come to see the grotto or to take home your own loaf of monk's bread, you're sure to enjoy the peaceful surroundings of St. Bernard Abbey. It's off the beaten path, and we hope to provide a little bit of peace in this crazy world we live in. So, um, you know, I, a lot of times people come here seeking some peace. I know I did. I think people come here because they're, they're searching for something. And uh, what they're searching for is ultimately God. And I think God is found here. Plus, the bread comes with an extra special ingredient. It's made with a lot of prayers. Uh, we don't bless it, uh, <laughs> but we leave that up to y'all. Now, Jim, when I've done some other food shoots, you always kind of give me grief for not bringing anything back for you, but I have monk's bread for you this time. This is their cinnamon raisin, the traditional recipe. Mmm, has yellow raisins in it. Mm-hmm, it does, yeah. Really, really good bread, but Tell me again about those monks that brew beer. Oh gosh, <laughs> I don't think we have an order of those monks in Alabama quite yet, but make sure to go to Coleman and check out the monk's bread. It's good. Mm -hmm. There are many groups that do great work with abused and neglected household pets, but then your average dog or cat doesn't weigh in at around a thousand pounds. Up next on Simply Southern, Samantha Carpenter visits a Central Alabama volunteer horse rescue operation. The versatile peanut, meat of the earth, friend of the soil, tasty, nutritious, packed with protein. And Alabama peanut farmers nourish some very special things, families, communities, and Alabama's economy. Peanuts, good for you, good for Alabama. Home. It's where you take your time. Build the future. Make your memories. Celebrate. Come home. Alpha Insurance. Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The TAG Fund's education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agricultural Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. A farmer has to live on faith. We do all we can do, but we can only control so much. Alabama is the second largest poultry growing state in the nation, so we're trying our best to grow all the corn we can for that. What we produce not only feeds and clothes all of the United States, but about half of what we make goes on to the world market. We've been able to improve yields, have some things that, that can help us produce a better crop. I'm proud of the product we make and proud that I can say I'm an Alabama farmer. From the Derby Darlings to the jingling Christmas Clydesdales, horses are nearly as beloved an animal companion as the family dog or cat. But much like with our favorite house pets, mistreatment of these animals is sadly not uncommon. This week, Samantha Carpenter introduces us to a volunteer effort that is blazing a trail to greener pastures for horses in need. This beautiful horse's name is Romeo, and like the hero of Shakespearean fame, his story is a tragic one. He was, uh putting it mildly, literally a skeleton um, with probably within a day of passing. 
and uh, through the help of the Sheriff's Department, Humane Society, and the Dusty Trails crew, uh, it took probably about five or six people to literally get him to stand. Romeo's was an extreme, but sadly not uncommon, case of abuse and neglect. Whether it's through physical injury or abandonment, horses are just as vulnerable to mistreatment as domestic pets. While law enforcement does their best to assist in cases like these, it takes a lot of work and dedication to bring a horse back from death's door. It was seeing this need that inspired Monica Orndorff and her husband to form Dusty Trails Horse Rescue. We started in 2005, and we did get started because of people calling in horses that were abused and neglected, and they called sheriff's departments and ag departments, and nobody did anything. So I kind of came across one myself and went through the same thing and basically asked my husband what he would think about starting a horse rescue. And he said, sure, honey, go ahead. Working with local law enforcement and the Humane Society, Dusty Trails has responded to countless instances of cruelty and neglect. In some cases, the horses are left behind by their owners. In others, the court is asked to intercede. The goal is to nurse these animals back to health and hopefully find them a forever home. But for many of these cases, that can be a long road. We've had very many horses that had been on the ground and couldn't get up anymore. They were so emaciated that they could not help themselves get up. So unless we get involved and help them up, they will die. We try to make it as comfortable as possible. We literally feed those horses every two hours around the clock, 24 hours a day. So this is a routine that we have to do daily for two, three weeks until the horse is strong enough to get up on its own. Sometimes in just as little as six weeks, Dusty Trails can have these guys looking like a horse again. But it takes a lot of work and a lot of money. Financially, I wish it would be easier. Every month we're counting our pennies to pay the feed bill, the farrier, the hay bill. We feed round bales. It's $45 a round bale. As the rescue grows more crowded with new cases and horses waiting on a new home, education has become a growing priority for Dusty Trails. I think neglect is more of a problem than abuse. A lot of times pe people that are not horse people will get a horse and don't know how to take care of them. I think Monica's trying to educate people about how to take care of horses as opposed to bringing them to the rescue. Quite frankly, we would like to shut our doors and not be needed, which of course will never happen. We rather go and educate the owner, do this, 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 and this, to bring the horse back and you can keep it instead of us having to seize it. While the rescue has been a major undertaking for Monica and her family, success stories like Romeo make all the long hours and expense worthwhile. The day I saw him, he was out in the pasture and he came up to me and there was just a bond that day. He would have been dead had Monica not gotten him, and he's one of the best trail horses you could ever want to ride. This is coming from the heart with me. When I started it, it was because I wanted to help. I can't see myself not doing rescue. It is something that I'm good in. I, it's something that makes me feel good at the end of the day, knowing I made a difference to that one horse. For Simply Southern, I'm Samantha Carpenter. If you're interested in helping Dusty Trails in its mission, you can volunteer, make a donation, or even sign up to foster a horse. Find out how at DustyTrailsHorseRescue.org. Now they've just got one horse that lives at the rescue and his name is Hitchhiker. That's right, because they found him just roaming the back roads in Otaga County. And he was very sick when they found him, but now he's in very good condition and in his late 20s. That's a lucky horse. When Simply Southern continues, who doesn't love pecans? Unfortunately, 2017's unusual weather can make them harder to find. One out of four Alabama residents have benefited from the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. Last year, Master Gardener Managed Gardens donated $150,000 worth of fruits and vegetables to food banks and over 25,000 young people developed math, science, technology, and engineering skills through 4-H. 
Now what we want to know is, how can we help you? Soybean is a very versatile product. We make crayons out of it. A lot of the combines you see rolling through the fields have a lot of plastic side panels that are made from a soy product. The soybeans that we grow on our farm mostly goes into chicken feed. Soybean production in Alabama employs over 10,000 people. We grow some of the best soybeans in the world. We go the extra mile to make sure when our name is stamped on it, we know it's the best product we can produce. Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The TAG funds education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agricultural Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. Being a catfish farmer to me means carrying on a legacy that my father started about 35 years ago. It's a good way to take care of the land and provide a nutritious product for people all over the world. My name is Mary Quitman Holmes. My sister, my father, and I own this farm, Lawson Catfish Farm, in Perry County, Alabama. Cookies, candies, pies, it seems pecans make everything you put them in better. Unfortunately, they may be a little harder to find because of last year's harsh weather conditions. Kevin Worthington has the story from the pecan orchards of Baldwin County. For most of us, last summer's excessive rainfall was a nuisance. For some farmers, it became a disaster. Growers across the state were affected, but perhaps none more so than along the Alabama coast. We've had a little over 100 inches of rain this summer. Uh, then right before harvest season, we didn't have a great big crop. We had a good crop. Uh, then Hurricane Nate went right into the west of us, and with that, we didn't have hurricane force winds here, but uh, the storm was active enough here that it beat the pecans together in such a way that a few of them got bruised. Gary Underwood says the hurricane cost him a quarter to a third of his crop. But when the rain refused to stop falling, a bad situation got worse. From the date of the hurricane for the next, to the end of October, we had over uh, 20 inches of rain in, at this location. And so that made it to where we couldn't get into the field and harvest the product, because, and the pecans just sat on the ground. So then we had some that started to rot that had been on, down on the ground since hurricane. Underwood says the problem he faces is twofold. There are fewer pecans to sell, and of those that remain, many are of lower quality. The quality's been lowered, and what we're doing right now we crack the pecans and then pick through them to make sure that the customer gets what they pay, that they get good pecans. We don't want them to, you know, crack 10 pounds and then nearly a pound of them be bad. You know, that, that, that's not right. So we, we go through the product uh, and make sure that people get uh, good quality pecans so they can have to use for the holidays and stuff. Unfortunately, South Alabama pecan growers aren't the only ones suffering. All across the South, a number of weather events created a perfect storm that took out about a third of the region's pecan crop. I got a friend in North Carolina last year, they got hit by a hailstorm. It ruined them. Uh, Hurricane Harvey hit Texas earlier this year, and it hit on the eastern part of Texas, where not, that's not their heaviest part of the pecan orchard, but it's still a lot of pecan industries there and it was a little bit south of A&M in Houston. A lot of those areas got hit hard. Then you had Hurricane Irma come up through Florida and lasted and went on into Georgia and it devastated Georgia real bad, just like it did the citrus fruit down there. Uh, but the pecan industry in Georgia was hurt. It took a hard blow this year. The industry as a whole took a hard blow. But behind every storm cloud, there's a silver lining. For consumers, it's that there will be plenty of pecans because of a record crop in southwestern states. For Underwood, even though storms took much of his 2017 crop, they left his trees alone, giving him high hopes for this year. The only limbs that were broke were small limbs, no big limbs. Uh, we didn't lose, but uh, 
one or two trees that were old and damaged. They probably were struck by lightning years ago. So um, as far as trees down, it was nothing like Hurricane Ivan. I lost 400 and something trees in Hurricane Ivan. So they'll come back with the full crop next year, we believe. For Simply Southern, I'm Kevin Worthington. Mary, since you were so kind as to bring me some monk's bread, I brought you some pecans. Now they were in short supply this year, but they're really good. Let's see, mm, they are really good. And it's nice to have pecans because that means that I'll be able to make some Kentucky bourbon balls this year. And you made good. Mm -hmm. When Simply Southern continues, Sydney Phelps of Bonnie Plants has some tips for watering your garden, particularly through the dry summer months of a normal year. There's nothing quite like sitting down to a home-cooked meal with fresh vegetables from the garden. With Bonnie Plants from your local quality co-op store, you can enjoy the freshest vegetables right from your own backyard. And no matter if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, your quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the most out of your plants. You'll always find what you need, plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. What we eat, what we wear, it all starts somewhere. And if it's good, it usually starts with a farmer. And that somewhere is right here in Alabama. In a field, in a barn, on a tractor. Right now, there's a farmer starting something good for all of us. And it all starts right here in Alabama. FFA makes a positive difference in the lives of students by developing their potential for premier leadership, personal growth, and career success through agricultural education. We're strengthening American agriculture and providing our members with the skills needed to build healthy local communities, a strong nation, and a sustainable world. We are the next generation of agriculture. It's our turn now. Let's show the world what we can achieve together. We, we are FFA. FFA. For more Simply Southern, be sure to follow us on social media. And while you're online, visit our website, simplysoutherntv.net. Simply Southern will continue in a moment. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is, it's all you need for your garden to succeed because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center, Bonnie Plants, so you'll know how to grow. Hey folks, Sydney Phelps here with Bonnie Plants. Today I want to talk about watering practices and drought busting techniques. Traditionally we all use the same method in the garden and that is a garden wand on a soaker or a shower setting and you always want to make sure that you're using those settings so when you dial in that's going to get the accurate amount of water to the plants but you're spending all of your time out there watering and when you're doing this you don't want to just shower the plants like crazy and get it all over the foliage. Always make sure you're watering at the base of the plant so that the roots can get the nutrients. The foliage are not really needing the water. It's going to be the roots so make sure that you're doing that but if you don't have time to sit out there all summer, you have issues with water restrictions uh, like states like California, you really have to start finding ways to use watering in a smart method. One of the ways of doing that is using a moisture control soil. Uh, moisture control soil will help the soil retain moisture throughout so you're not having to water as much. Now keep in mind when you're working with plants that don't like a lot of water, it may not be best to use a moisture control soil because it may damage the plants. Another step that you can use from that is a soaker hose. Soaker hoses are great for raised beds, uh, traditional style gardening, not great for patios however because you can't really work them in and out. But soaker hose will put out a great amount of water. They are low maintenance and really all you have to do is just turn it on, let it go. As you're working with soaker hoses though, the first few times that you're working with them, you want to make sure that you monitor how much water goes to the plants. You don't want to overwater. Then again, you're just wasting water. Once you find how much you need to water and how long it takes, an inexpensive method so you're not having to watch it is just an analog timer. You can dial this just like an egg timer that you have in your kitchen. You're going to water for 30 minutes, 60 minutes. This one goes all the way up to 120 minutes. 
you can set it and forget it, go home and not have to worry about, well, did I turn the water off or is it still running? Because it's already shut off, you're not overwatering your garden. Same thing works with different areas of your lawn or shrubbery. But if you want to be more accurate and be pinpoint, the best solution is drip irrigation. You can find drip kits for under $20 at your local retailer. And we've got a drip kit here in a container. It works great for patios, it works great for a raised bed because you can take the stake and literally place the water exactly where you want it, pinpoint to the base of the plant. Now, this is an awesome way, and there's a couple of ways that you can use it in interactive methods. You can use the traditional analog timer. Um, they have timers that are digital that work right off of the water faucet that you can program and pre-program. Or if you want to take it up to a next level, you can go into lawn irrigation. And Blossom has got an awesome program uh, that is basically lawn irrigation system. So you have multiple zones. So as you're planning this out, you can create a zone for your garden or raised bed. And you can have multiple spots for your drip to go to areas that you've got planted in your, and move those around as the plants need water. Uh, the cool thing about the Blossom app is it's completely Wi-Fi and Alexa enabled. So if you have an Amazon set up, you can say, Alexa, water my garden. But don't fear, you don't have to have Amazon to make it work. It works off of your smartphone and you can literally set schedules. But the cool thing about this is it has weather analytics. So if it's raining in the forecast, it's not going to water your garden. It's going to be very strategic of how much water it puts out. And it's going to let you know if there's freeze warnings, if there's water in the forecast to make sure that you're not wasting your time. So this is truly the smart method of gardening. If you want to find out more information about how you can use these apparatuses in your garden, check out bonnieplants.com or the app Homegrown with Bonnie Plants. If you have a question for Sydney, drop him an email at simplysouthern at alifarm.com. You can also find other gardening information online at bonnieplants.com. Thanks for watching Simply Southern today. Make plans to join us again next week when we'll meet a group of people with some of the most unusual houses you're likely to find in these parts. We'll also meet an impressive young lady who's already begun a career in agriculture, and she's still a teenager. Thanks for being with us today. I'm Mary Johns. And I'm Jim Allen. We'll see you again next week. Simply Southern is a production of the Alabama Farmers Cooperative and the Alabama Farmers Federation.